Hello, and welcome to this Morpheus Tech Brief. I'm Martez Reed, Director of Technical Marketing with Morpheus Data. And in this Tech Brief, we're going to walk through the distributed worker. So what is the distributed worker? So the Morpheus distributed worker is a lightweight agent that acts as effectively a network proxy to provide reachability into environments that do not have inbound access. Uh, certainly, there's a number of examples of this from various other vendors. A common one that brought up for those that are familiar with ServiceNow is a mid-server. So what it does is allows the ability for the platform to have reachability into those environments via that distributed worker. The distributed worker makes the outbound call on port 443, HTTPS, to be able to initiate the initial connection with the Morpheus server. Then from that point, that will enable bi-directional communication via a website to facilitate various operations that the Morpheus platform supports, such as being able to integrate with various hypervisors and be able to deploy workloads into those environments uh, utilizing that integration. Number of ways that this is valuable to customers in areas, various use cases, are things like hybrid cloud environments in which a Morpheus instance or deployment is hosted in a public cloud, as an example, and then being able to leverage the distributed worker to provide reachability into an on-prem data center. This is particularly valuable in that it eliminates the need for a VPN, VPN connection specifically for Morpheus to be able to facilitate that interaction. Certainly there may be a VPN for various other reasons, but leveraging the distributed worker that no longer becomes necessary for that specific use case. Multiple data centers, there may be a desire to leverage the distributed worker to help facilitate that communication in a distributed fashion. Uh, and then in scenarios, certainly as mentioned, similar to the hybrid cloud environments, uh, from a customer perspective, for those that are managed service providers and have various customers environments that they want to be able to integrate or tie into without the need to have to require or open up that VPN connection to that customer environment. So in this example, we have a Morpheus instance located in Chicago data center, having connectivity to two different data centers, Dallas and Los Angeles, and then being able to interact with a VMware hypervisor via the distributed workers located in each of those environments. So it really looks to provide a distributed architecture for the Morpheus platform and provides the value of being able to execute those operations local to that environment uh, without the need for that VPN connection, as we mentioned. Let's take a look at some of the system requirements for the Morpheus distributed worker and ways in which it can be deployed. So the Morpheus distributed worker, as I said, is a lightweight agent that can be installed in a given environment. The ways in which it can be installed are varied. So there is a Docker container of the Morpheus worker. So it can be run on Docker, it can be run on Kubernetes. It could also be ran as an installable package on operating systems like Ubuntu. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as SUSE Linux Enterprise, and a few others. The minimum hardware requirements are four processors, uh, four gigs of memory for the particular system. Uh, those are listed in the uh, Morpheus documentation for the distributed worker. And then it supports a number of clouds uh, at the moment, such as VMware vSphere, Nutanix, and OpenStack to be able to facilitate the deployment and interaction with those given environments. Let's take a quick look at the distributed worker configuration. Within the Morpheus platform, in this case, where you want to be able to interact uh, with the given systems. So this could be an example of Morpheus running in the cloud or in a centralized data center. Under administration integrations and distributed workers, there's the ability to be able to add a new distributed worker to the given platform. So what this is going to do is prompt you to provide things like a name for the distributed worker a description. And then once that's done, it's going to provide you with an API key to be able to configure the distributed worker. And then as well as a proxy port in which will uh, some of the communication will be handled. So in this particular case, we've got two distributed workers that have been added. So from a process standpoint, you'll come into Morpheus, 
add a distributed worker. And then on the system that will act as the distributed worker, you will install the software either via the package for one of the operating systems that we mentioned or run the Docker container either on Docker, Docker Compose or Kubernetes to be able to facilitate that interaction. And a number of things will be required from that configuration perspective. Things like the API key that we see here, as well as the uh, address to reach the centralized Morpheus server from a reachability perspective. So let's take a qu quick look at a demonstration architecture. We're gonna jump into the Morpheus uh, platform to take a look at some of how these things fit together. So as an example, there's a centralized Morpheus instance running in Chicago data center. There is a Los Angeles data center that has the hypervisor that we wanna interact with. In this particular example, it is OpenStack. And the Chicago data center does not, the Morpheus instance in the Chicago data center does not have direct reachability to the Los Angeles data center hypervisor. So in this case, Morpheus can't directly reach out to the OpenStack hypervisor in this scenario, which is why we're looking to leverage the distributed worker to effectively proxy that communication. The distributed worker is installed. It's going to reach outbound to the Morpheus instance. So in this case, there's no need for a firewall rule to be created to open that port to access the distributed worker, as well as the VPN is not necessary because I can reach directly out to that Morpheus instance in this scenario. Uh, then it's going to provide the connectivity to my hypervisor in the ultimate scenario. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So once you've added the distributed worker, as we took a look in that configuration page, I can then come into infrastructure and I can add my given cloud. One of the other things of note is that when you provide the configuration for the distributed worker, you are also going to specify either the host name or the IP address of the workload that you want to reach. In this case, it is that OpenStack hypervisor. So what that's going to do is it's going to let Morpheus know that if you're going to communicate to this IP address or this host name, you need to utilize this distributed worker to facilitate that communication. So let's take a look at a OpenStack cloud that we've added. So we're gonna edit the cloud provided a name, code, all those basic things from that standpoint. But one thing of note is we now have a worker section that provides us the ability to be able to select a given distributed worker that is utilized to facilitate communication with this cloud integration. In this case, it'd be tech brief demo. I would specify the, in this case, the API URL. In this case, it's 192.168.0.3. And this is what I would put in that proxy information or that configuration for what Morpheus should utilize in terms of communication to this device. So I've got a question. Is there a limit of number of hypervisor hosts and guest VMs that can sit behind a single distributed worker? Uh, at the moment, there is not. Uh, certainly one of the things to that be you need to investigate is if you start to run into potential performance issues to make that assessment uh, in terms of addressing that particular issue. Uh, so no noted limits, but certainly something that you would need to uh, make the assessment of if there was a need to add an additional one or to uh, scale up, so to speak, the distributed worker to be able to handle that additional performance load. Great question. So outside of adding that distributed worker, none of the other things from a cloud configuration standpoint are really any different. But what we've done is be able to define the manner in which Morpheus will interact with that given cloud integration. So in this case, I've already added that cloud. So we'll take a look. So we could see that the cloud environment has been added. Uh, in this case, there's a single host. In this case, I happen to be running OpenStack nested inside another environment, uh, but it shows us the ability to be able to interact and communicate with that particular workload. 
in this particular scenario, where I'm connecting to is hosted in the public cloud. Uh, so this instance of Morpheus is running in the public cloud and the OpenStack environment that's being referenced is located in my home lab actually. And so it provides me the ability to be able to have that reachability from a cloud hosted instance of Morpheus into an environment that does not have a firewall uh, opened up or access into the environment and it does not have a dedicated VPN to facilitate that communication. All the communication is being handled through the Morpheus distributed worker. So it provides me that capability to be able to reach into the given environment, interact, communicate with the environment, as well as be able to provision workloads into that environment. Got another question. How does one ensure the needed throughput I need it to support an effective network connection between the distributed worker and the client's infrastructure. So the question becomes communication between the distributed worker and the Morpheus instance, ensuring that it has the, the dedicated network connectivity to be able to facilitate that. So if it's twofold, uh, certainly there's some aspects from a communication protocol perspective that is going to provide some, uh, shall we say, leeway in terms of the, the communication channel, uh, but certainly also one of the other things to do would be is uh, being able to have that communication of the need for this particular proxy or this workload to be able to have a good level of connectivity out to the, uh, the Morpheus instance that's running in the cloud or another data center. Um, great question. So we've walked through the Morpheus distributed worker uh, from a use case perspective, areas and ways in which it can be leveraged to provide a distributed architecture for the Morpheus environment, as well as looked at installation uh, requirements for the distributed worker, the actual dis distributed worker package from an OS installation perspective can be found in the Morpheus hub. Uh, so for those that are familiar with Morpheus Hub, to install or download Morpheus packages, if you scroll down to the bottom of the list, you will see a distributed worker package. The versions for the distributed worker are identified in the documentation to provide visibility into which versions of the distributed worker are required for a given version of Morpheus. The versions don't exactly line up one-to-one, -one, uh, which is why it's important to reference the documentation for which version of the distributed worker that you need to look to leverage for a given version of the Morpheus platform. Uh, and then from the installation standpoint, as I mentioned, uh, it's very similar to the Morpheus installer in that it really is, is one or two commands after you have provided the appropriate configuration. So we took a look at things like the API key, uh, as well as needing to specify the URL of the Morpheus instance that is running in the uh, centralized environment to be able to configure the Morpheus worker. One other thing of note is around the requirements for the SSL certificate for the Morpheus instance. It does need to be a trusted certificate in order for the distributed worker to be able to communicate with it. Great. Another question, uh, is this still only supporting networks with inbound restrictions? What about networks where there are also outbound restrictions uh, on the roadmap to deploy instances connect back to the Morpheus supply for the distributed worker rather than directly? Uh, so the question becomes the ability to be able to leverage effectively the Morpheus distributed worker for, it sounds like, proxy communication for all communications from that environment. Uh, so at the moment, a number of the actions that Morpheus will perform can go directly through the proxy. Certain operations will still need to uh, go back directly to the Morpheus instance itself. On the roadmap, as was, is mentioned in this question, uh, there are items that have been identified to enhance that functionality to have the distributed worker act effectively as a true network proxy of Morpheus communication to provide that functionality. That is something that is certainly a uh, high item 
on our roadmap for next year to enhance the distributed worker to effectively proxy essentially all that communication from a given environment back to the Morpheus instance? Hopefully that answers the question. So got another question. Uh, further expanding on concepts like express link or express route, guarantee a minimum network speed. How can one know and understand the connection in this case, utilizing the distributed worker to the customer's infrastructure? Uh, so at its core at the moment, the communication interaction between the distributed worker and the Morpheus instance uh, in a comparison is fairly minimal in that it is essentially uh, making the calls to initiate the given actions or operations for that given process that needs to be triggered or initiated. Uh, in terms of understanding the connection in the case of the distributed worker, uh, certainly there can there's a the manner in which the distributed worker connects and interacts are things like the outbound HTTP call to initiate the connection and start the WebSocket connection. Uh, then from that point, uh, the there are going to be things like the, the heartbeat to ensure that it's still communicating over that given channel. And then the communication back and forth. As I said, at the moment, the communication should be relatively minimal. Uh, certainly, as we talked about, when the platform or the distributed worker is going to take on more work as it relates to acting as that, that ultimate proxy for communication, uh, then at that point, there certainly is a um, some consideration that has to be defined for uh, what is the requirement for that given individual uh, workload to be able to address communication back to a Morpheus instance. Um, but at its core, that's the, the communication process of the, the distributed worker. Uh, certainly something that can follow up with your uh, account manager if there's a need for a, a deeper discussion into uh, ways to effectively be able to define that at a more granular level. Great question, though. All right, so we've walked through the demo architecture. Uh, and so definitely appreciate the questions and the interactivity. Uh, that wraps up this Morpheus tech brief of the distributed worker. Uh, certainly a number of ways to interact with Morpheus. Download the community edition for those that haven't kicked the tires on it. Uh, interacting with the Morpheus community at discuss.morpheusdata.com. Uh, we do also have plugins that are continuing to be developed, developer.morpheusdata.com. Uh, but certainly feel free to, to reach out to your account team, uh, those that are existing Morpheus customers, or reach out to us at morpheusdata.com about ways in which the distributed worker can be leveraged to provide additional capabilities within your given environment. Thank you everyone for joining and appreciate the time.